Hey guys, Avery here with Skip's Tactical Solutions, and I'm here with another episode of Talk To Me Thursday. So as you guys come on, I would love for you guys to let me know where you're joining from. And really quick, I'm going to go over what we will be discussing this week. So this week, we're going to talk about the top five concealed carry mistakes, and then we're also going to talk about some red flag laws really quick and then we're going to do a little bit of ask me a question so as you guys come on make sure that you interact in the comments this is definitely for you guys to interact and I cannot wait to tell you what's going to be new for this week hey Varden how are you hey Fred and Adoria thank you guys for joining and if this is your first time joining, please let us know that it is your first time joining. Chris, hey, thank you for joining. What we're going to do a little different this week that we have not done. So what I want you to do is, excuse me. I want you to share the video and if you share the video if you type shared in the comments below we will do a little drawing here earlier so that's something new that we typically don't do so if you share this video then comment shared in the comments then you will be entered to win so we will be doing that here shortly but um First things first, I'm going to let you guys know who the winner is for the giveaway from last week. So last week's giveaway was primary arms hat and a primary arms patch. Pretty sweet, right? And this is the back of the hat. Front of the hat and back, I mean, and the patch. All right. So the winner of this is Deb O. So Deb O, please reach out with your address and I will definitely get this sent out to you. Thank you so much to every single person who entered. Make sure that you guys enter because every single week we are giving away a prize. So if you are tuned in right now, what I want you to do is if you share this video you can share it to your twitter you can share it to your facebook you can even screenshot it and put it on your instagram stories or put it on instagram and comment shared in the comments below and we will be doing a little giveaway and that's only going to be for the people who have shared the video so i'll give you guys a couple minutes to do that but share the video comment in you will be entered to win. How is everybody doing this week? I hope you are having a fantastic week. I'm having a great week myself and I'm super excited to talk to you guys tonight. Hey Marv, how are you? And Varden, hey guys, how are you? Hey Nick, how are you? Hey Boss Hog, thanks for joining. And if this is your first time, please let us know that it is your first time. All right guys, so one of the first things that we're going to talk about is top five concealed carry mistakes. Feel free to add some of them if you would like. And um, this should get pretty interesting. So I'm going to give you guys a couple more minutes to share the video. Marv was able to make it out of work in time to check out the video. Um, let's see. Adrian, hey, thanks for tuning in for the first time. Where are you joining from? And for you guys that are tuning in, if you can give this video a thumbs up, we would definitely appreciate that. And if you can't give it a thumbs up right now, feel free to just give it a thumbs up later. Um, 
Chico Wise, I think that's how you say it. Um, first time joining. Thank you so much for joining. Where you join us from? And Adrian, thank you so much for joining from Chicago. If you guys have any questions, please make sure that you comment your questions below. All right, so let's see. Hey, Drax, thanks for joining from Michigan. Let's see. Leonard is joining us from Las Vegas. Um, thank you, Drax. Drax said, love this shirt. You can get your very own Skips Tactical Solutions for shirt sorry, from my website. And if you have not shared the video, if you share the video, you will be entered to win something. So another thing is today we're just doing it slightly different than we normally do it. So normally we start off with the giveaway from last week. So if you stay tuned to the end of this video, you can be entered to win something on the live and also you will find out just how to win something next week so first things first that we did we introduced the winner from last week so the winner from last week won this hat and she also won this patch which is pretty nice so primary arms hat primary arms patch with a velcro on the back and that was deb o so all you have to do whenever you win is just shoot us a message to our Facebook, Instagram, or you can just send it to us an email with your address and your name, and we get it shipped right out. And this week, what we're going to do, everybody that shares this video and comments shared in the comments below, they will be entered to win. So the winner of that will be this Glock hat and a CMC koozie. So I'm gonna give you guys one more minute to go ahead and share the video and comment shared, back of the hat. And what else we're gonna do? Probably midway in this video, we are going to do a little surprise giveaway. So I'm very excited about this little surprise giveaway. I think it's pretty nice. But at the end, if you stay tuned, you will be able to enter to win something only if you're on the live all right so only if you're on the live and then at the very very end i tell you exactly how you can win something next week all right so we're going to go ahead and hop into what we got going on this week and let's see Make sure that you guys share it and comment. I'll give you guys a couple more minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the first. We're going to do top five concealed carry mistakes. And I want you guys to interact. If any of this applies to you, please don't take it to heart. We are here to learn. So if you have questions, make sure that you ask your questions. But these are just some of my top five. Not all inclusive, but if you got questions, please let us know and go ahead and share if you have not shared yet. So top five concealed carry mistakes. Number one is going to be selecting the wrong firearm or the wrong caliber. So how many of you have possibly encountered this or you know someone who has encountered this themselves? So I see this a lot with people who are not really sure what firearm they should get and sometimes they just listen to a friend and they don't really listen to a professional and some other people will start out with 45 because they heard 45 is the best caliber and what i can tell you is when it comes to new shooters you probably don't want to start out with 45 all right you might want to start out and it all depends on the person as well so you may want to start out with if it's someone that may be a little bit timid shy you may want to start out with a 22 when you're introducing them to firearms so when it comes to concealed carry you can do 380 you can do nine but i would not start out on those higher calibers all right hey trey thank you for joining 
Welcome home. All right, so selecting the wrong firearm or the wrong caliber. When it comes to selecting the wrong firearm, when you're purchasing a firearm, you have to know exactly what you want that firearm for because I could go into a store and I can go, okay, I want to buy a firearm. The first thing that they should probably ask is, what is the intended use of the firearm? So if any of you have ever reached out to me on social media or you've taken a class with me, you're going to know that that is one of the first things that I ask is, what is the intended use? So for something for concealed carry, you're going to want something that you can conceal on your body. And if you're anything like me and you're 5'2", which let's just call it fun size. If you are a smaller individual, you may not have a lot of real estate on your body to conceal a firearm. So for me, I definitely want something that's going to be a little bit smaller when it comes to something like possibly a Glock 19. I'm not really going to be able to conceal that on my body and still dress the way that I want to dress. Yes, I could probably wear hoodies all day, every day, but would that be really effective? No. And would people think that I was crazy? Possibly so. So when it comes to selecting a firearm, you need to know what caliber you want, and that will go hand in hand with the actual firearm that you purchase. Do not get a firearm just because your friend has it. Do not get a firearm just because someone told you that this is just the best because you don't know how it's going to fit in your hands. So now we're going to choose our first winner for the night. We're going to have a total of three winners tonight. Um, thank you so much to everyone who shared the live video. So if you have not shared, you can still share, but we are about to pick a winner. All right, so the winner for sharing the video tonight, which I truly do appreciate every single one of you who shared the video, the winner is Chris from MD. So please shoot me a message with your address so that I can send you your CMC koozie and your Glock hat. All right, thanks everybody. So you guys probably think that I'm talking kind of fast tonight. And if I'm talking too fast for you, please let me know but I did have an energy drink when I got home today. I was kind of tired, so I had an energy drink. <laughs> All right, so concealed carry mistake number two, all right, is picking the wrong holster when you decide to conceal carry. When you choose the wrong holster, that can be a major deal breaker because you probably will not want to carry that firearm if that holster is not comfortable for you. So that's another thing. You may want to take recommendations from other people, but everyone is not going to like the same thing, okay? So make sure that you think about that. When it comes to carrying in a holster not be the correct holster, it can also make it very unsafe for you to carry as well. I have my go-to holsters and my go-to holsters, it really depends on the way that you like to dress because those of you who have been following me for a while, you know that your girl hates, absolutely hates wearing a belt. So my holster makes it a lot easier for me to carry my firearm without having to wear a belt. And that's just the way that I am. But when it comes to a holster, you want a holster that is going to properly properly secure your firearm, okay? And you don't want to go cheap, all right? When things are cheap, then they possibly are not made correctly. You want to make sure that it has a nice snug fit. And when I say a nice snug fit, you want to make sure that if you're possibly running or you trip or anything like that, 
but it's not just going to fall, right? Because that would possibly be a very, very bad day, right? So having a holster that is the correct holster, your firearm properly fits in it. And for me, when I go to the restroom, and I know it's kind of taboo to talk about going to the restroom, but let's be honest, we all do it. And if you are carrying a firearm concealed, then you're not going to be able to go home and use the restroom every single time. But when I carry conceal, my holster enables it to, it enables me to be able to have my firearm on my body still and use the restroom. A lot of people have that, oh my God, what am I going to do with my gun in the restroom? But I don't have to deal with that because the type of holster that I have, it allows me to be able to properly secure my firearm and utilize the restroom. Um, when it comes to being uncomfortable carrying concealed, you possibly wouldn't want to carry, right? Because you're like, oh my God, this sucks. It's uncomfortable. It may be rubbing against your body the wrong way. And when it comes to being uncomfortable, a lot of people will fidget with their clothes in public. So you will start to see people pulling on their shirt or maybe they're going under their shirt so that they can possibly adjust their holster. So if you find that you have a holster or you're carrying in possibly a new position and that position is not comfortable for you, what you wanna do is go to the nearest restroom where you can lock yourself in a stall and adjust yourself without people seeing you, okay? Because people may start to get nervous if you're like over in the corner fidgeting with your gun and they don't know what you're doing. So just go somewhere where you are able to be in a private room by yourself, preferably in the restroom, and probably just move yourself where it needs to be. And if you need to, then you may just have to take the holster off. Like if it's that uncomfortable, you may need to take it off and just try it again another day. But I really suggest for people to introduce their holster to their body inside their home and walk around your house. You can do your, I, I call them chores because I have kids, <laughs> but you can walk around your house. You can clean up. You can do all the things that you would normally do. If you bend down to pick up something, that's a normal movement that you would be making. Or if you go down to sit on the couch and you're like, I really don't like the way that this holster feels. Or if you're sitting at the table eating lunch or eating dinner, what if you go out to eat? You're going to be use, utilizing that same type of movement. So it's really important for you to try these things out before you leave your house. And if you leave your house and you have a new holster, you may want to introduce a small trip. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to run to the grocery store really quick. And we all know if you're going to Walmart, you're going to need to be strapped. So you go to Walmart and you're going to go run to grab a few things, which we all know if you go to Walmart, you're not just grabbing a few things. You're grabbing a lot of things, right? <laughs> so if you go to Walmart and it's going to be a quick trip, you will just get your little gear together that you've already pre-positioned and you know what's comfortable for you. And then you come back and you're like, oh, that actually wasn't that bad. Versus just introducing a super long trip, like maybe shopping at the mall. <laughs> and you're just so uncomfortable to where you just can't wait to take it off and just put the gun away. So that was mistake number two. And feel free for you guys to share some of those mistakes below. And we can all learn from these. This is not a I want to make fun of anyone or anyone in the comments wants to make fun of anyone. This is a learning environment and we will all be learning. So mistake number three. Let's see. So Yarn Dragon said, I have had so many of these issues before. They're fixed now. So glad you brought them up for others who may be having them. Thank you, ma'am. And so Yarn Dragon said that she has encountered these before. So if you have encountered something that I haven't shared, feel free to share it and we can discuss it. So we're going to move on to mistake number three. And mistake number three is thinking that you don't need any type of additional training and 
never stop when it comes to your training because it's not only about firearms, all right? So everyone on this channel right now watching this who loves firearms, they're probably like, what? What did she just say? But I'm here to be honest with you guys, and this is not just about firearms. This is about situational awareness. This is about medical preparedness for emergency medicine. This is also about conflict avoidance. So if you have stopped at your state's requirement for concealed carry, I want to let you know that that is only the beginning, all right? So if you have not taken any type of additional training, then I think it's time for you to kind of reevaluate. And so we're going to talk about a couple of things tonight, and I hope that it will get you to thinking about maybe I may need to put a couple bucks away so that I can take a class, all right? So the concealed carry classes, and it all depends on where you are because different states have different requirements, but they are not a all-inclusive class. And think about the information overload that is going on in those classes. So some people have never touched a gun before and they're taking a concealed class. And it's one of those things to where you can only really process so much stuff in this information overload. So if you took your concealed carry class and you had some questions and you quite didn't get them answered, What's wrong with you taking a refresher class? So if is there anyone that is watching this right now that has, let's say, if you've had your concealed carry license for seven years, comment below. All right, so the reason why I pick seven, right? Think about how much can change in seven years. There's so many things that can change in the matter of seven years. But think about in one year, there's a lot that can change in one year as well. So if you took your state's concealed carry class seven years ago, right, and you've been carrying and you haven't really brushed up on the laws, then I think it's time for you to take a refresher class, but I would really caution you to go maybe three years or so, but you should be very, very aware of the laws for your state because laws can change and that is going to be the first thing that is going to get you in trouble and not knowing something and just being like, oh, well, I forgot or oops, I didn't know. When it comes to gun crimes, those are not going to be ideal answers, all right? So if you haven't taken a class, taking a refresher is very, very good. And think about some of the other things that you do. Um, how many people are CPR or stop to bleed or any kind of certifications that you get, you typically need to get a refresher, right? I think concealed carry is the same. You need to get freshened up on those laws. And if you take a different class, you can get a different instructor's perspective. And it is so good to listen to different instructors because different people have different styles and you're always gonna pick something up from, some, from someone else. Unless you're, your instructor's me and she's awesome. Just kidding. But um, another thing is situational awareness. The reason why I said this is not all about guns, right? It's also about situational awareness because we want to try and avoid some of these situations, right? We want to be able to avoid the situation so we don't have to deal with the situation of utilizing our handgun and possibly killing someone or just having to deal with that traumatic event for the rest of our life. Because if you think about what you would do, you're not really going through that entire process of the stress. So no, you're not really thinking about the fact that you may be super stressed out or you may have PTSD associated with that shooting. You're not thinking about that. You're just thinking about, oh yeah, I'm gonna protect myself. 
but we want to avoid these things if we can. So getting a class on situational awareness is definitely the way to go. And emergency medicine. If you did not tune into last week's Talk To Me Thursday, we talked about tourniquets. We talked about a lot of different things that you need to know because the possibility of you getting hurt or someone that you love getting hurt and bleeding out, it's possible, right? And if you can stop someone from bleeding, and let's see. Sorry, if you can stop someone from bleeding, you can save their life. So if you do not have any type of medical training, that is something that is very, very important for you to do because not everything is about, someone said it really good last week, it's not always about putting holes in things. Sometimes you need to learn how to plug holes as well because that's extremely important. Let's see. Um, and Marv said training should be mandatory, so shall practice. I really, really agree with that. You need to know how to operate your firearm. You need to know how to take it apart. That is very, very important too, because so many people know how to shoot it, right? But there's so many people who don't know how to unload it. There's so many people who don't know how to reload it. And if you don't know how to do those things, your range buddy or your husband or your wife or whoever does it for you, right? If you are carrying concealed, they may not be there to help you. And that is a high possibility that you may need to reload or you may have a stoppage or a malfunction. And if you have not taken a class, then that's something that you may possibly not know how to do. And when you purchase a firearm, so for anyone who is watching this, if you have not purchased a firearm before, it's not a requirement for them to go, okay, well, have you shot a gun before? Or have you done this before? You're purchasing the firearm and you possibly may have concealed license but they're not asking you about the amount of training that you've taken or if you're comfortable with the firearm so that's really on you to take those steps to be comfortable and confident with your firearm as well and i want to give a quick shout out to all of our patreon supporters i see that we have quite a few of our patreon supporters on here you can donate for as little as one dollar a month come on guys one dollar a month and you can be a patreon supporter so i really appreciate each and every one of the patreon supporters and i know i mentioned it last week but every single month we have a patreon only giveaway and I think we're probably going to do that Patreon only giveaway sometime next week. So stay tuned if you are a Patreon supporter. And if you have not checked out the podcast from Monday, I gave the Patreon supporters a, well, actually it was last Monday. It wasn't this Monday. Um, I gave the Patreon supporters a quick shout out on there as well. Thanks, Yarn Dragons, for tuning in to last week's episode. Hoodneg, thank you so much for tuning in. And Miss Adoria said, I hate I missed it working. Hey, Varden. So George Waddle said, how about training other than shooting paper? This is very, very important. I really, really like shooting steel. How many of you that are watching this right now like shooting steel? And if you like shooting steel, I would love to know why you like shooting steel. And then I will share with you why I like shooting steel. There are some ranges that will allow you to shoot a little bit of everything, all right? And for me, I do like to introduce other things. Sometimes I'll shoot at um, balloons. You know, you can shoot at cans. But what I do urge you to do, if you are shooting any objects 
that are not like your regular paper target, if there's debris left over, please clean it up. Please clean it up, all right? Because that's how the ranges get really, really dirty and they're like an eyesore. So try to make sure that you maintain it and it's just along with good housekeeping. So we had, let's see. So Yarn Dragon said, agree. I think all of the training you get is great. What additional training do you do? Um, Tremaine said, I do. Trey said, I have enjoyed steel. And Chico said, I like the almost instant feedback of the steel plates and JR, thumbs up. So Chico, I was gonna say that same exact thing with steel, you get that instant feedback. So if you are, you know, your eyes are kind of not so well and you can't see if you hit that target, when you're shooting steel, you will absolutely be able to hear if you hit that target. And it's fun and you're hitting it and you're like, bam, bam, bam. So shooting steel is very good. And it is also a really good confidence booster because if you hear that you are hitting those shots, then you're going to get excited and you're just going to keep doing well. But what I typically will see is when people cannot hear the hits on the target. So if you're shooting paper, you're not going to be able to hear it. and You're possibly not going to be able to see it either. They start to look off to the side, like instead of looking through their sight still, they're like looking off to the side and they're like, oh, did I hit that? Did I hit that? And that's just going to throw you off. And if they can't see that they hit it, then they start to kind of like get down on themselves and they start to second guess themselves. But the moment that they, you know, look to the side and check and see what they're doing, that they're messing up their follow through there. So try not to do that. But I am a huge advocate of steel targets. When I have students, I like to introduce steel if we're shooting outside because it's fun. And who doesn't like shooting steel? Um, Tremaine, absolutely. So George said movement drills. So with movement drills, it is very, very easy to um, be unsafe. And I know with me as an instructor, I have insurance. So when I'm on the range, I have insurance and there are not a lot of ranges that will let you move and shoot without an instructor. So that's just an additional um, hazard when it comes to a range. And I know for me, um, when I go to the range, sometimes there's already so many people out there that are kind of lost. But yeah, moving and shooting is good because the possibility that you may have to shoot on the move is highly likely. And if it's highly likely, then it needs to be something that you have trained and you are prepared to do and you know how to shoot on the move because that is a skill that you're not going to be able to just pick up the first time that you do it. So, George, do you do um, movement drills? All right, so... Um, I don't know how to say your name, so I'm not going to mess it up. So Foster said, check out USCCA's Into the Fray episode 251 on how to use the restroom while carrying a firearm. That is something that you guys can definitely do. Barton said, I used to compete in steel plate competitions. Nice. Um... George said, I have done some with instruction. So there are some places that will allow you to do that without an instructor, but you have to make sure that you watch the terrain because you can easily trip and fall and you need to watch the other individuals that are around you as well. But that is something very, very important to do. But when it comes to shooting on the move, you can practice that in your home as well. So you can see how your firearm will be moving while you're walking. And then you can see how you can slow down your steps. So if you are going to do anything like that, I would highly suggest that you first introduce it in your home so that you know exactly what it's like and then you introduce it at the range. So 
Chico said, do you shoot? Oh, um, sorry, I'll say that in a second. So Chico said, do you shoot steel plates with frangible ammo or have you? So I have. And when, so something else that I'm going to tell you guys is when you are shooting at steel, you want to make sure that you have some quality steel because if you do not have quality steel, the possibility of you shooting it, and you also don't want to be too close, you can be shooting it and you can get some splashback with the steel. So the steel that I use is shoot steel and they have some really, really good steel. So sorry, I know this is kind of off on a tangent, but you need to make sure that you have some really good quality ammo. Not quite, yeah. You always think quality ammo, but you need to have some good quality steel and you don't want to be too close either. But the steel that I've been using, I've been using it for over a year and it doesn't have any kind of pits or anything in it. So I can pick it up and I don't have to worry about me getting cut or anything like that. <clears throat> but I have had some very, very bad horror stories when I have went to event shooting schools and we were shooting steel and we were not using frangible ammo. And there was one time, so this is like story time. <laughs> there was one time I was shooting steel and we all had like our own bays and I wasn't really close at all. It, I mean, it was probably 10 to 15. Yeah, it was about 10 to 15 away. But I was shooting, shooting, shooting. And all of a sudden there was like a piece of steel probably about this big and it was in my neck and I just didn't freak out inside I was like oh my god did this really just happen so it was in my neck and what I did was you know I just holstered my weapon I stepped back from the line and I let the instructor know hey um someone please come over because I need some help <laughs> and hey something's going on so I had some steel that was stuck in my neck but I'm very, very careful when it comes to shooting steel because you can really get hurt. And that is another reason why, and I'm going to throw another little safety tip in here. You always need to make sure that you wear eye pro when you're on the range, because that could have been the one time when I was like, oh, okay, you know, my glasses are fogging up, so I'm going to lift them up. And if I would have lifted them up, the possibility of that not going into my neck and it possibly going into my eye was likely right because that's not a lot of room so that's something that you need to watch out for because you can't replace your eyes and you can't replace your ears so when i'm shooting i really really stress the importance of making sure that you have eyes on and you have your ears protected as well because those are some really valuable assets that you have right there so if you find yourself not properly protecting your eyes and you're just like, oh, I'm just out here shooting, um, I would really get out of that habit because that is not a good habit to have. You can be shooting at paper and you still need to make sure that you have your eyes protected because you cannot control the environment around you. And especially if you're on a range and there's other people there or just regardless what you're shooting, there can always be something that can come back. Sorry guys, I just went on like a whole tangent about safety. <laughs> Chico, thank you. So I hope that... All right, so tip number three was making sure that you go out there and you get some additional training. All right, additional training is very, very important and you want to get additional firearms training. So like I said, you can get your refresher CCW classes. You can go and just take, and it doesn't have to be a refresher. It can be a brand new class. And you can also get some classes on emergency medicine. You can get classes on situational awareness. And we all can be a little bit more aware of our surroundings. So that is definitely an investment that is worth making. Hey, Juan, thank you for joining. All right, so before I get into these last two tips, I see that we have a few people that are new to the chat tonight. 
So if you're new to the chat tonight, that means that you may be new to me. So I want to introduce myself really quick because I failed to do that in the beginning of this video. So I am Avery and I am the owner of Skips Tactical Solutions. So if you don't know what my name is, my name is Avery. A lot of people just call me Skip. So hi Juan. So I am a firearms instructor and I have been instructing for... 10 and a half years, which seems kind of crazy. That seems like a very long time. And in November, it will actually be 11 years that I've been instructing. So that's crazy, but I have been instructing for a very long time. And I am a very, very girly girl. So what I did about a year and almost a half ago, it was March of 2018. I opened up Skip's Tactical Solutions because I felt like there were a lack of quality firearms instructors out in the community. I'm just going to be honest. All right. So that's why I started Skip's Tactical Solutions. And I knew that I had a skill that could benefit so many people. And there were not a lot of instructors who not only looked like me, but there wasn't a lot of instructors that had my personality. So what you see is pretty much what you get. Don't get it twisted though, because I can go all the way there and I'll come back. But I just felt like there were so many instructors that were not really focused on putting out quality instruction. So I'm all about putting out quality instruction. As you guys can see here right now, um, I like to teach. So here I am on a Thursday night, 8 p.m. Every Thursday night, I go live with you guys because I want to teach you. So I started Skip's Tactical Solutions because I'm very passionate about teaching women, children, and men. So I don't dish, I don't know, sorry, I don't just teach women, all right? I teach men and I teach children as well. So I have a lot of families that I train and I just love what I do. And I also want to add that I did not grow up around guns. I did not grow up shooting. The very, very first time that I shot a gun was in the military, all right? So in the military, I joined back in 2003. You guys can probably count and think about how old I am. But 2003, I joined the Air Force, and that was the very first time that I shot a gun. Didn't really care it was, it was what it was. It wasn't like I was like, oh my God, I love this process. It is so cool. No, wasn't interested in guns. And then about a little over 11 years ago, I decided that I wanted to become an instructor because I did not know anything really about guns. And I felt like it was a skill that would be really good to have. And as a female, you can never go wrong with learning how to protect yourself and just especially in this world nowadays, no one can go wrong with that. So I decided to become an instructor and for the past almost 11 years, I have been instructing. So that is what I do on a daily basis. And I started a company so that I could teach people out in the civilian community as well. So I'm located in Tampa, Florida, but I can, um, sorry, I just had a brain fart. I can travel, but if you want, me to come to you all you have to do is reach out and we can definitely work something out but i do appreciate every single person that is here i have worked very hard to educate people over the past year and a half in the civilian community because i want people to know that gun ownership does not look like one certain race it doesn't look like one certain gender and you don't have to dress one certain way so i think it's really important for us all to be able to protect ourselves and not only be able to protect yourself, but to be confident and just secure in what you're doing. So I have kids, I have a husband, and it is my job to be able to protect my family. And I want you to be able to protect your family as well. So that's why I started my business. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to always reach out to me. Um, I do have a full-time job, so I do skip tactical solutions on the side but I do it with a full-time grind. So um, I have a Facebook page 
and it's facebook.com slash skips haskell solutions and all of this will be in the description below once this video is over and i have an instagram page which is instagram.com slash skips tactical solutions and i also have a twitter but i'm not really active on twitter so sorry for all of you guys that like twitter and i have a podcast and my podcast is called skips tactical solutions and i think i'm about to wrap up season one of the podcast it was so nice to start a podcast it was a lot of work though don't get it wrong it was a lot of work because i'm a firearms instructor not a podcaster not an editor none of that but i wanted to bring you guys quality info okay and if there's anything that you guys ever want me to cover on the podcast or on the live i'm all about doing that but I have a podcast, so I would love for you to support the podcast as well. If you have a podcast player, all you have to do is type in Skip's Tactical Solutions and you will find the podcast. But I also have a YouTube channel. I'm really trying my hardest to put out videos every single week on this channel. But like I said, I do have a full-time job. I do have two kids in school, husband, and I am a college student as well. But cheers to each and every one of you that are here we do this every single thursday night at 8 p.m and you guys are awesome so jr said i totally agree that there is no cookie cutter mold to identify a gun owner i cannot i could not have said that any better myself um i'm really trying hard to educate people on gun ownership, personal protection, situational awareness, because it's very, very important. And being a minority, sometimes we really don't see ourselves reflected in the gun community. So I took it upon myself to do my thing and show people that you can be a gun owner, you can be a firearms instructor, you can protect yourself and your family and not look like what most people think the average gun owner looks like, all right? And less so if you guys have any questions feel free to drop them below and here in a bit i'm going to do a little q a where you guys can type your questions and you can ask me some questions and i'm going to answer a couple questions that people have sent in to me already and if you're not already subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the youtube channel we would definitely love that and we're gonna go into conceal carry mistake number Four, all right. So concealed carry mistake number four is wrong ammo selection and not testing your self-defense ammo with your firearm. So how many of you know that target ammo is completely different than your personal protection ammo, self-defense ammo? And if you did not know that, it is absolutely okay because you're learning tonight. So if you did not know that your personal defense ammo is different than your target ammo, then you just learned something on this live tonight. It is very different. And when it comes to your personal protection ammo, you want, so what I will tell you is if you have never bought personal protection ammo, it's expensive, all right? So, your regular target ammo is not going to be as expensive and they have different ballistics, all right? So when it comes to your personal protection ammo, you want to get it and you want to actually take it to the range, although it may hurt your heart because it's more expensive. You want to take it to the range and run it through your firearm. And there's a couple of reasons why you want to do that because you want to make sure whenever you pull that trigger, that your gun goes bang, right? And not every manufacturer when it comes to ammo is compatible with every firearm, all right? So sometimes there may be issues with that round feeding, and that is something that you wanna identify ahead of time, all right? And you want to run it through your gun and make sure that it is smooth selling because the wrong time to identify that, like I already said, is when you need to eliminate a threat, all right? So you wanna run your carry ammo through your gun at the range, and then you also have your range, 
your target ammo, and that's the ammo that you go out and you practice with, all right? So there is a difference, and if you have been carrying target ammo in your firearm, then you want to make sure that you stop and you actually get some personal defense ammo. Um, let's see. Chico said, shoot where you carry, carry what you shoot. Absolutely. And Juan said, I use elite performance. And you just, um, I think it's Lucky Gunner Lab that put something out about the different specs on the ammo when it comes to the ammo. Just check it out. And you want to be educated on what you're carrying. You don't want to just carry something just because someone told you that's what you should carry. Yes, exactly what I really don't want to mess your name up. Anthony. Um, so Foster said target ammo, you get more rounds at a cheaper price. Self-defense ammo, you get less rounds at a higher price. Yes. And I've seen to where some individuals do have feed issues and it's good that it's identified at the range versus when they need to eliminate that threat. All right, next we're going to do concealed carry mistake number five. All right, number five is not properly maintaining your gun. All right, if you do not properly maintain your gun, there is a possibility that when you go to pull the trigger that it will not go bang. It may possibly have a malfunction and you do not want that to happen to you. I don't want it to happen for you. So I know that you don't want it to happen. So that is something that you need to know how to do is how to maintain your firearm. If you don't know how to do it, I really encourage you to learn. You can take a, like for me, I do gun cleaning workshops and that's where you're going to sit down with me and you're gonna learn exactly how to clean your gun because not all guns come apart the same way and not all guns have the same parts. So I need you to know how to clean and maintain your firearm. Um, There's some people who like to say that they're gonna run thousands and thousands of rounds through their firearm before they clean it. Is that the smartest thing to do? Possibly not. Is it because you don't want something to break or something to not function properly just because your gun was dirty, all right? And I mean, I don't really think that we need to say much about that, but when you're cleaning your firearm, you also want to make sure that you're using a quality cleaning product, all right? Because if you are touching your gun, and let's say for instance, which I'm just gonna use this one. This is my carry. Actually, let me not show that side. This is my Glock 43. And this is my carry gun. So whenever I'm cleaning this right, I'm putting it back together, my hands are touching my gun, there's possibly some of that whatever I use that's gonna be on my hands and it's on your gun. And you don't wanna introduce things that are hazardous to your body. So I use Breakthrough Clean Technologies because it's non-toxic and you may want to find something that is good for you and your budget but what i will tell you is people will tell you to use a whole lot of everything they'll be like just use this just use motor oil just use whatever right that does not mean that they are right all right so you have to be very very aware <clears throat> that you need to maintain your gun and you need to maintain your gun because it comes in contact with a lot of things and for me the type of holster that I use, it doesn't contact my body directly, right? But depending on the type of holster, I mean, your firearm may directly touch your body and the oils, the dirt, the whatever. And if you off body carry, if you have it in a bag, it's possible that you can get a little bit of everything 
in and on your firearm. So you want to maintain it. And if you're going to the range, just wipe it down every now and then. If you're going, come back, take it apart, wipe it down, make sure that there's no, um, that there's nothing that's broken, right? And you want to identify if something's broken when you're maintaining it. You don't want to do that whenever you go to pull the trigger and you're like, oh my God, nothing's happening. Um, Juan uses spell software cleaning and lubrication. Rob says, hello, people. Yes, I agree. Clean your gun is a must. Foolish not to take care of the tools that you want to save your life. Um, Clover said, there are a lot of good products out there. Not a whole lot that are non-toxic, though. Um, Fuzz said, a clean firearm is a happy firearm. That is true. Um... And to kind of talk about what Rob said, um, I call my concealed carry handgun, my firearm, whatever you want to call it, I call that my lifeline because when I have to use this, that means that my life is in danger. Like there's legit danger here and I need to eliminate someone, right, with deadly force. And I want to know that I maintain my product. Like, I don't want to pull out my gun and it's like, oh, man, I didn't do this or I didn't do that. Or, oh, you didn't even put it back together properly. So it is very, very important that you take care of your firearm. And you also want to look at them as investments because, let's be honest, they're investments as well. And if you're spending $500, $600 on a concealed carry handgun, and don't get it twisted. You don't have to spend that much money, Okay. Do not think that I'm saying you have to spend that much money because you can get affordable products that you will still be able to save yourself with. But if you're spending that amount of money, why wouldn't you want to protect yourself and actually keep up on that investment? Because you can pass these things down to your kids and then your kids can pass these things down to their kids. So you're definitely going to get your money's worth out of them. But really quick. Yes, Fuzz. But shout out to Clover. Thank you so much for joining. Um, Clover Tech had me on his podcast. I think it was a couple months ago. So thank you so much for having me on with you. Um, so for those of you who are tuning in right now, here in probably five or so minutes, we're going to do something different. We're going to switch it up and we're going to have another giveaway midway in this video. So we're going to do another giveaway. And then at the very end of this video, we're going to be doing a giveaway as well. So we did a giveaway in the beginning. Actually, we did two. <laughs> we did a giveaway in the beginning for someone who shared the video. And then halfway, we're going to do another giveaway. And then at the end, we will be doing a giveaway for everyone who is still on the live at the end. Let's see. So Fuzz said, you don't want lint in your bore causing rust and plugging the barrel, nor do you want a wasp nest in your board. That is true. Fuzz said, I clean my firearms with a string and cloth for years. And Clover said, yeah, that's been a while ago, but folks can still go here. Good stuff. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me on, Clover. And thanks for helping me out with the info for the live stream. I will definitely be trying out the live stream a different way here soon. So thank you for helping me out. Clover Tag, good peoples. Um, Screaming Skull said change excuse me change out your carry ammo every six months to one year that is very important as well make sure that you're not only changing out your rounds you're rotating them um within your magazine and that you are really watching out how you're treating your ammo some people have um a lot of like fuss said debris and they're not really paying attention to what's going on. So be very, for lack of better words, intimate with your firearm. You need to know what's there, what's not there. And just treat it like it's your lifeline. 
Newcastle, thanks for joining. It's okay that you're late. Better late than never. You guys are like enough with her wag jokes. <laughs> All right, guys, so we went over top five concealed carry mistakes. At the end of this video, I'm going to kind of recap those. If there's anything that you want to add to those, I would love for you to add. That was an all-inclusive list. I probably could have did like top 50, <laughs> but it was definitely a good top five. If you have not started to carry, these are some of the things that you need to think about. If you're carrying... And like Yarn Dragon said, these are some of the things that she has also encountered carrying. And it's just something that you want to be mindful of because it will deter a lot of people from carrying a firearm. But we don't want you to not carry. We want you to be properly protected. And the next thing that I'm going to cover is if you are in the state of Florida and you have not gotten your Florida concealed license, I want to let you know that their turnaround is absolutely amazing right now. Their turnaround is like two weeks, all right? Two weeks to get your concealed. And if you just so happen to be military, they are expediting your um, license. And you can get your license in like a week, a week and a half possibly. So if you are looking to take a class, you're in luck because I have some classes coming up in Florida. So my next, so next here, I'm going to go over some of the upcoming events that we have going on. And the 3rd of September is my next Intro to Pistol class. And Intro to Pistol is the class where you're going to learn how to shoot, learn how to operate a firearm. And you're going to sit in the classroom with me for two hours. We're going to learn. And then for the last hour of the class, so it's a total of three, the last hour we're going to apply every single thing that we've learned, all right? We're going to go to the range for an hour, and we're going to shoot. And if you don't have a firearm or if you don't own a firearm, it's okay because you can rent them from me. And then the 21st of September is my next Florida Conceal class, and that is a three-hour class where you learn all about the Florida Conceal Carry Laws. And what's so special about that day is... That is going to be my birthday. So we will have a big old party. Okay, probably not a party, but it's going to be a concealed class. So, and on the 31st of August, 31st of August is a event that I will be doing in Daytona Beach, Florida. And it will be for National Shooting Sports Month. And it will be with Sky Firearms. So it will be Sky Day. And I will be out there teaching a total of, I think, about four little short mini classes on anything from concealed carry to picking out a firearm. So I'm super excited. If you are in that area or you just want to come out there, I would love for you to join me. And they will have a ton of giveaways and they will have their pistols on sale. And I think all their pistols are going to be, don't quote me, I think it's going to be like $179 or under, all right? <laughs> that way I'm safe. I know it's under $180, so I think it was like $179. So that's really good. I really like their CPX3. That's their $380. So if you are in the area, I would love for you to join. And hopefully, um, whoever is able to join, I would definitely love to grab lunch with you guys. So I think there's a couple of people who are in my Facebook group and they said that they will be joining and we're definitely gonna have to grab lunch together. So that is a way for you guys to come out, get some free training and also get out to the range and try out some different firearms. All right, guys. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Chico Clover is not a good dude. <laughs> Just kidding. Um yes, got a Florida third. Yeah, so if uh, another thing about my classes though, my classes are very small intimate setting i don't have like 10 people in a class unless it's like a group class where they want to have 10 people but i like a very small 
environment to where everyone can get their questions answered and everyone can be comfortable. And if there's like a whole bunch of people in the class, then if we have a short amount of time that we're trying to get our objectives met, then everybody's not going to be able to get their questions answered. So my classes are very small settings and I think my students really, really appreciate that the classes are in the smaller setting. So those are the upcoming events and I would love to see you guys. And if you don't want to do a group class, which the group classes are the classes that I already have on my calendar, then you can absolutely schedule a private class. I do private lessons as well. I do private one-on-ones and I do private groups. So a lot of my private groups are families and they just want to be able to get trained all together and in a private setting. So I love training families and I would love to train you and your family, all right? So if you're watching this video and you have learned something or you something that I said resonated with you, I would love for you to hit the thumbs up on this video. And I will also love for you to share this video with someone as well. You can share it on your Twitter, your Instagram, your Facebook. You can even share it to my Facebook, all right? <laughs> oh, and another thing that I'm glad that you said that yarn, yarn dragons, because if you take a class. So what I have is sometimes people will come to Florida and take a class with me and get a Florida out of um, out of state license. So they're a non-resident of Florida, but they can still get a license with Florida. And if their state has reciprocity with Florida, then they're good. So that's another option for you to do. So even if you don't reside in Florida, you can just come and take a trip and take a class with me. All right. Um, guess what, guys? It's giveaway time. All right. So if you haven't shared this video, I would love for you to share this video. And next, I want to highlight a company, but I'm also going to give something away. So Really quick, this is my concealed carry firearm. All right, so I love my little Glock 43. All right, can anyone tell me what kind of trigger this is? Yes. So this is a CMC trigger. I absolutely love my CMC trigger and we're going to give away some CMC swag. All right. So this is a CMC flat face Glock trigger. All right. And I love CMC really quick. Something about CMC is not only do they have really quality products, right? So they have quality products. And I run a CMC. So this is my carry. I run a CMC trigger in my carry. And in my, I want to say I have, I actually have a build that I'm going to be showing you guys soon that has some CMC products in it. But I have it in my AR. And then I have a couple other CMC triggers. But I really, really love their products. And let's just talk about how amazing the company is, all right? So not only do they have really good products, right? CMC is a family-owned business, right? And they are some phenomenal people. So they're very family-oriented, and I have just completely loved the way that CMC has been very welcoming, right? So CMC, really good company really good products and i wanted to show you guys not only so everything that i talked to you guys about if it's not something that i use is something that um i do like so that's really important for you guys to know that there is no one paying me to say anything and you guys don't ever have to worry about me saying something that i don't believe in all right 
because there ain't enough money for that. But you see, I'm using CMC and my own carry gun and I wanna give you guys some CMC swag. So if you want some CMC swag, all you have to do right now is type in CMC, all right? So type in CMC. And while you guys are typing in CMC, I'm just gonna show you the CMC swag that I have for you guys. So we have a, another CMC koozie. And as Clover stated, they are in Texas. So you have a CMC Trigger Texas sticker. Two CMC Triggers stickers. This is where it starts to get good, guys. Also, a CMC Triggers shirt. This is the back. <laughs> so you have the shirt, you have the koozie, you have the stickers, and I got something else for you. You also have a CMC flag. So this is a nice size flag. So thank you so much to CMC for providing these products. And if you have not commented CMC below, make sure that you comment CMC below so that you can win this awesome swag. CMC. And I was going to wear my CMC shirt tonight because I have one just like this. But I would have been late. So didn't want to do that. So definitely some really nice products. I appreciate CMC for giving me these products. I just want to let you all know that your girl be hustling so that I can really get you some nice swag. <laughs> I'm always trying to reach out to these companies to get you guys some nice swag. All right. So CMC, CMC triggers. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a couple more minutes to comment CMC below if you would like to win those CMC products. And one last look at my carry gun. And it is a Wonder Woman theme. And I got this done at Shark Coast Tactical and I think they're in Sarasota, Florida. Can you guys see that? All righty then. These are... Um, let me see if I can show you guys. These are Trijicon. So this is a Glock 43. This was literally like my first gun. And 
probably oh last year so i've been caring for a while and last year i decided so this was a stock black gun and last year i decided to get it cerakoted um no this is gun candy so i decided to get um i actually got a good bit of work done on it but this is a i know it may look a different color but this is rose gold and this is gun candy all right so um my husband says that my gun is extra just like me but do you guys think i'm extra <laughs> um this is a sock barrel but i did get slide cuts I said I wasn't going to do a lot, but then I ended up doing a lot. But they did a fantastic job on this gun because if anybody knows me, I'm very particular about my stuff and it has to look a certain way. And I told them if they could not do it good, then just don't do it at all. And they did a fantastic job on this. All right, so this, and see, look, look at that detail. All right, so, sorry guys, I'm done showing you my gun. I do really like it though. But let's pick this giveaway winner for the CMC products really quickly. But I want you to know if you didn't win, it's okay because at the end of this video, we are going to have a, another winner, all right? So let's see. <clears throat> oh, Casper said it's cute. Thank you. All right, so the winner of the CMC swag is Trey Three C's Allison. Thank you so much for each and every one of you who entered that CMC giveaway. But Trey Three C's Allison is the winner. But you guys still have like one more chance to win, so it's cool. Don't worry about it. Um, next is ask me a question. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to think of a question that you may want to ask me. But first, I'm going to answer some questions that have been sent in to me because sometimes I get a lot of questions in my inbox or my DMs. So I'm going to answer them for you. So you guys can ask me anything, but just make sure that you keep it respectful. All right. So um, one of the questions that I get a lot is what is my favorite gun all right what is my favorite gun so you guys will probably think that my carry gun is my favorite gun it is my lifeline though but that's not the gun that i love the most and that i love to shoot the most all right so i want to share with you some of you probably know what my favorite gun is so if you think you know what my favorite gun is comment below I have some people who've been with me for a while and they may know what gun I'm gonna say. But my favorite gun is, I'm trying to see if someone's gonna comment it. I do have a favorite AR though, Trey. So my favorite gun is my Canik TP9 SF Elite. This is my favorite. You may wonder why this is my favorite. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, what I really like about this is um, if you haven't heard about them, 
then they are kind of like a hidden gem that a lot of people don't know about. And I've been talking about them since I started my pages, my channel, whatever, because I really, really like this gun. And <clears throat> there are quite a few things that I will tell you about. One is it is a very affordable option for a handgun. Um, I'm not going to lie and tell you that I remember how much I paid for it, but I can tell you that it's very affordable, all right? Um, <clears throat> this is a stock gun. I, I have not, what they say, gucci it out, right? This is a stock gun, right? And I love the way it shoots. So I want to show you the sights on this, and you probably can't really see it well. But I really like the sights. I really like the way that it shoots. And it is a very reliable gun. And these sights are fiber optic. And just get Mr. Slick, yes. I really love this gun. And I talk about it a lot. <laughs> but the Canik TP9 SF Elite is one of my favorite guns, Century Arms. And if you have not checked out this gun, you definitely need to check it out. What I will tell you also, though, is if I could carry this gun as my everyday carry, I would. The problem with this is that it's just too big for me to conceal on my body. I cannot conceal this on my body without wearing like a hoodie or something like that. But when I do off body carry, sometimes I throw it in my bag. <laughs> so I can off body carry this and I really, really like it. So they're supposed to be releasing a subcompact soon and they are often um, said to be similar to Walter. So check them out. Very, very good prices. And some people just don't like them because they say they're not American made. All right. So <clears throat> it is up to you. But if you haven't shot one, if you know someone or you can go to a range and try one out, I would highly suggest that you do because they are really, really good, all right? So I like my Canik TP9 SF Elite, and I definitely want to get my hands on a subcompact because I would carry it. I would definitely have to, like, like break up with my 43. But don't tell my 43 that I'm going to break up, all right? So I want to get my hands on one of those so that I can shoot it. And for me, it's just... I'm all about quality products. So if you haven't tried one, you need to try one, all right? And then when you try it, tag me and let me know what you think because you're going to thank me, all right? These are some really good guns and you can get them at some really good prices. And when I teach my classes and I talk to my students about new firearms, this is definitely something that I put in their hands and they like the way that it shoots and they get comfortable. And then um, if they want to do something smaller, then they do something smaller. But this is a good gun. People are like, what is that again? Can you write that down? Can you do this? Can you do that? I'm like, yes, let me write it down. Let me send you a link so that you can purchase this gun. <laughs> so I am able to do so much with this gun but normally when I go to the range and I'm getting I definitely get practice time with my everyday carry but when it comes to my mechanic when I want to go to the range and have fun I'm shooting my mechanic so I can't remember what holiday it was but I love my TP9 SF Elite so much that my husband bought me an SFX and I haven't really been able to shoot my SFX a lot because my optic kept going out. I mean, my red dot kept going out. So this is, I think, my second one. 
that I've gotten from Vortex. So we will probably take this to the range soon and see how it is. But you guys see, these are my babies. If you know someone in Canic, please tell them to send me quite a few guns because I love them. <laughs> All right, so this is my SFX, the TP9 SFX. And these are just some really affordable handguns, guys. Like I, I do like nice guns, but I will tell you that I don't like to spend a lot of money on them. But I'm definitely going to buy something that is quality, and I'm going to buy something that is affordable because that's just your girl. So I'm here to let you know that you can get your hands on a Canic and not spend an arm and a leg, and it's actually a good gun. So in the winter, I can definitely carry this on my body. I'm going to be wearing probably a looser shirt. And I will also be wearing something, um, adding more layers so that I can conceal it. But like I said, right now, I can carry this and off body carry and I can be fine. All right. Hey, Erin. And hey, Love Created. Hey, how are you guys? But yes, I'm um, Canic One. Um, definitely looked at those two. Um I definitely love me some Canic guys, so check one out and let me know what you think. Or if you guys ever go to the range with me, just let me know that you want to shoot it and we can definitely hook that up. I have seen the executive. Chico, yeah, that's nice. I um, I really like them. And they just fit good. So if you get your hands on one, just see how it feels. And it, guys, listen. So Aaron just didn't come up in this live chat talking about he just bought him a Canic for his birthday yesterday. Which one did you get? Oh, sorry. That is so rude of me. Happy late birthday, Aaron. Which Canic did you get? And if you don't mind telling us, how much did you pay for? Because I cannot remember how much I pay for mine. And on this one, like this stock trigger is nice as well. And if you guys can see, so Aaron said he paid four sixty nine for his, and there's not a lot of guns that you guys can get that you will be able to go stock. Well, actually, you can go stock with anything. So let me take that back, but. There's not a lot of guns that you're going to be able to get and be able to um, just take it out of the box and then just be really good. Like it has the good sights, it has the good trigger, and it just feels good in your hand. I don't even think I said that. So thank you so much, Aaron, for saying that. So Aaron said that accuracy will make the worst shooter feel like he or she is a champion. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Um, if you have someone who is new to shooting, I would, if you have a Canic or you can get your hands on one, definitely try to get um, them one of those because it will definitely help their confidence. Sorry, guys. All right, let's see. So, super happy birthday to 
Aaron. So, um, Aaron, what I did notice, though, is I do have people that will say, oh, that's not a such and such, but I'm like, I love it. It shoots good. So worry about yourself. <laughs> Hold on, let me check some of these comments. Love created hate. Do you carry a knife? So when it comes to your everyday carry, I really recommend that you guys have kind of like a setup. And I posted a picture and it's probably like sometime last year. So I'll probably need to repost it of like my setup. So I think you need to, and I'm just going to name a few things. You need to make sure that you have an everyday carry firearm, right? And then you're going to need a knife and you're also going to need a flashlight. So, um, I don't have my flashlight in here with me, but I do have the box that it comes in so that you guys can see it. But, um, I have the Benchmade Infidel and And you never really know when you're going to need a knife and you never really know when you're going to need a flashlight either. So let me show you guys my flashlight. So if you didn't think I was extra before, you may think I'm extra now, but I'm going to show you anyways. <laughs> so this is my flashlight. And this is a Olight. And I actually have some of these on my, actually, no, I'm not going to lie. So I have Olights. I am a Olight dealer. So I do have Olights on my website, but I only have one of these left. And this is a special edition. I think it's like the spring version, but yeah. And the lumens on these are very, very nice. And you can check out some of my older videos on this, but you have a USB um, magnetic charger that you can put here. So really, really nice. Your button here. And I think it is five settings. So um, EDC, you need to be able to have your firearm. Your light and your knife. Oh, um, Yarn Dragon, you won O light, didn't you? I think she won an O light here on the channel. So this is um my EDC and then a tourniquet as well. And if you go back to the last live that we did last week, you will see where we talked about tourniquets and the importance of them. All right, guys. So there you have it. And the infidel. So if you're looking to get a quality flashlight, Make sure that you head over to my website and you get you one there. Um, and if you join my email list, I'm just going to tell you guys because you're here with me right now. If you join my email list, you'll get a 10% off coupon code that you can use on my website. All right. 
So if you have any questions, feel free to ask your questions below. If I do not answer your questions, I will try to answer it a different time. But one of the questions that I get asked often is about my favorite firearm. So I want to share that with you. <laughs> oh my God. J.R. Timmons said I was extra. You're right, though. When you write, you write. But I do carry different firearms sometimes. Um, sometimes I'll carry the three, the Sig P365, and I also have a um, Sky 380. Um, so Foster said I have the Olight A3T EOS. Really small flashlight. I wish I had a higher low lumen setting. The high setting is 100 lumens. So if you're looking to get a different Olight, then I definitely have um, quite a few different options on the website. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so, Philip, I just talked about why the Kinnick is my favorite, um, but the fact that it's, like, stock and a really awesome gun is definitely a huge factor, and it is also um, very accurate, as Aaron said. So Philip said his is the HK VP9. Nice. Yeah, I said extra is almost always good depending. <laughs> where did you get the where did I get the knife? Um, so I got the knife from work. I got it issued to me through work. So Chico said, have you or do you shoot long range? So a problem that I have here is we don't have a lot of ranges that are long distance, right? And then the ranges that are long distance, like their hours are not so hot. So I want to get more into long distance shooting, but yeah, definitely don't get to do it enough. Years ago, long distance, yeah. Um, recently, no. Tampa just doesn't have a lot of land where you can go shoot long distance. Mr. Slick said, that's how I found about you through Sky. Nice. Thank you so much for checking me out. Um, Aaron said, I can't re-enlist too old, but nice, nice. Um, it's a bench made, so check out their products um you can also what other knives do you guys carry yeah it's a bench made infidel sorry the infidel Let's see. But Aaron, I am on my last reenlistment though. <laughs> um, Screaming said Kershaw, Cairo, and Kershaw Blur, nothing fancy. And just know, guys, like you don't have to have fancy stuff. Like all this stuff that I have required has been over the years. And <laughs> for me, um, 
some like this knife was issued to me from my unit like a while ago. So yeah, um, the girl ain't going out buying a whole bunch of stuff, but definitely um, gotten these things over the years. So Chico said, I recently joined the 1K Yard Club. Congratulations. Check out Dead Zero Shooting Park in Tennessee. Nice new 1K Yard range. Nice. Congratulations. And Froggy Frog said, Benchmade Cricket River. And Yarn Dragon said, I carry something I picked up at the BX. And something is absolutely better than nothing, guys. Um, another really quick story, guys. So whenever I would go to the gun show with my husband, like the only way that I would go is I would just check out these little cheap knives. And yeah, he said I had a problem there for a while. I was like buying a whole bunch of little cheap, cute knives <laughs> that I would never carry. <laughs> but what I will say, I'll probably post a picture sometime soon. There was this one knife that I bought that would match this perfectly. But it's like a little cheap, no... No, nothing serious knife, but it matches this. Um, I used to carry my snap-on knife. Got the job done. Yes. JR said Kershaw and Gerber. Nice. Some nice names that you guys are putting out there. Um, do you guys have any other questions that you would like to ask me? Um, let me think of something else that I get asked. I'm located in Tampa, Florida. That's where I am. Um, another question that I had. Ooh. So Chico asked, I'll try to stay away from this. Um, Chico asked, last question for me, and feel free to ask as many questions as you like to ask. Um, do you shoot revolvers? Um, I personally am not a big fan of revolvers. There's definitely a market out there for them, but um, I don't really care for them. When it comes to people recommending them, a lot of times they like to recommend revolvers for women, and they say because you can just point and shoot. Um, not so much. Um, when it comes to women carrying I would rather them have something that has um, more round capacity because if you were to <laughs> encounter a threat and let's just say you only had, let's say six rounds, right? And you miss two and then the person still coming at you or whatever it may be and you need to reload, you're literally going to have to go hold on for a second and you're going to have to open it up. You're going to have to get those rounds out. Then you're going to have to reload those other ones in. And I know you can do it a little bit quicker than that, but I don't know about you guys, but I would love to just drop out my mag, pop my new one in and get back on my target. So yeah, I'm not quite a fan, but there's some people out there that love revolvers and I don't knock anyone but there's also the market of people who may not have any type of hand strength and they just need to open up that gate and close it. But I apologize, um, Chico, because you did see it on my face. I was like, Ugh. because the people who do, who do love revolvers, I don't want them coming for me because I said that I don't like, I don't really care for revolvers. But do you guys like revolvers? Mr. Slick said, what's your job in the service? Um, my job is I am a firearms instructor. And I'm also a gunsmith. And I'll also share with you that I have been in the military for 16 years. So, 
So Foster said, I don't want a revolver, only pistols. I think I should probably get a revolver, though. I, I've shot a few, but I just don't really care for them. Aaron said, I had a Taurus 30 special, traded and grabbed a Smith & Wesson M&P 45 ACP. Nice. What made it you, what, I said, what made it? <laughs> what made you decide to trade it in? And Trey, thank you. Juan said, I feel the same way with revolvers. Thank you. So if they come for me, then are you going to have my back? <laughs> And if you have not hit the thumbs up on this video, please hit the thumbs up on this video. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to drop your questions down in the comments below. There's not a lot of times where I, um, I guess, answer a lot of like random questions. I won't say random, I'll say personal questions. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I crit. Yes, I am close to retirement. Um, I just did not like the revolver overall. Nice. All right, guys, so if you are watching this video right now, then that means that you have made it all the way to the end, and I really appreciate it. So what we're going to do now is this is going to be our final giveaway for the night, our final giveaway for the night. Um, if you want to be entered to win, and this is going to be a sticker pack. So for my sticker packs, there are like 10 random stickers in the sticker pack. And they are from a little bit of everybody. You will have a Glock sticker in there. You'll have a CMC. You'll have a skip. you have a random. You don't know. But it'll be 10 stickers in there. So if you want to be entered to win that, then all you have to do is is drop a comment below and then just type giveaway all right and it's only for the people who are on the live right now chico said being a gunsmith and firearms instructor have you ever reloaded your own ammo i have not reloaded my own ammo and i don't have time really Um, one I use, let's see, sorry, Barnes Tech P XPD. <laughs> all right, guys, so all you have to do right now, so we are heading towards the end of this video all you have to do is comment down below and comment giveaway and you will be entered to win a sticker pack so the sticker and um there are some people who are on this live right now who have won giveaways And if you have not shared this video, I would love it if you would share this video. I see that. So I'm just going to call you Neek because I don't want to mess your name up. Um, Neek is on the giveaway. Thank you so much. She has definitely supported and she has um, purchased a few products from us and she just recently bought a necklace so it wasn't this necklace it was kind of like this necklace but she recently purchased a necklace so we have a few different ones available if you would like to purchase one just shoot us a message they're not on the website and if you want to purchase your very own skips tactical solutions logo shirt then head over to the website and you can purchase yours. And for those of you who like revolvers, you can also get your revolver necklace.
I definitely try to get the products out fast. Um, and sometimes it may just be a bit. And when I say a bit, it's like four days after you won that I get it shipped out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nick, for getting your necklace from me. All right, so make sure that you comment below giveaway so that we can wrap this up. I really appreciate all you guys tuning in tonight. If there is something that you guys want to discuss, make sure that you hit me up so that we can discuss it. And um, what I did not talk about, though, but I will be covering it soon, though, is red flag laws. We definitely need to talk about that. And then... Um, women who carry Wednesday every single Wednesday I feature a woman who embraces the Second Amendment sorry I um, feature a woman so if you want to be featured or you know someone who should be featured please send me a message so that we can link up and feature this person I want to feature all women because like I said before, it doesn't look like one single person, and I think we need to just show all these gorgeous women who are embracing the Second Amendment. Thank you, Yarn Dragons. Thank you so much, JR. All right, so this is your last chance to enter for this giveaway. Type in giveaway below. Mr. Slick, I'm so glad that you were able to connect with us um, from Sky. And make sure that you tune in and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and you may have a chance to win something else. All right. So the winner of the sticker pack giveaway is Screaming Skull Saloon. All right. So thank you so much to everyone who entered. Thank you so much to everyone who joined tonight. And... Congratulations to all the people who won tonight. So if you won tonight, please link up with me. Send me your address so that I can get it shipped out to you. I will definitely be shipping out these products tomorrow. If you have not checked out my website, please check out my website. And that website is skipstacticalsolutions.com. Make sure that you check out my YouTube channel every single Monday for a new YouTube video. And I really appreciate you guys. I hope that you have a happy and safe weekend. And I will see each and every one of you right back here, same time, next Thursday. And have a good weekend, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to Talk To Me Thursday.